Hey kiddos, I wanted to apologize for worrying you because the last video was a little worrying. Um, I caught myself trying to do a live yesterday. I did a live yesterday. I did a live. I did a whole last fucking live. It was 17 minutes long and <laughs> I had a few people come in. I don't know who, um, but it was like five people. Like at any given time, it was between one and five, and um, no one said anything. <laughs> but I was talking about my job, and I felt like I may have said too much about it. And I uh, did the whole live. Was planning on you know making it private and maybe like editing it and putting it back up. But what happened? <laughs> what ha fucking happened was did the live. I privated it and then downloaded it and so i'm going back to try to edit it because like it's not a whole lot of the video where i'm like there's like bits and pieces where i'm like that's a bit too much information so i decided like you know i'm gonna do that instead of just keeping the live up or like permanently taking it down i go through the live <laughs> and your boy's titties is out like i was in the tub <laughs> and i had taken the sleeping pill and so i was a little bit like loopy like on the edge of like I was a little bit high and while I'm doing this this live I'm holding the camera in my hand it's it's not in my uh fucking um my mount like I usually do and uh I just flashed my titties like several times <laughs> in this live <laughs> I just took the video down and nothing happened <laughs> so yeah I um accidentally flashed titty like definitely could see my nipple rings like it was enough titty that you saw a nipple um and um yeah so for those who were lucky enough to see it this will be a chapter in in Finn lore the time that Finn flashed their fucking titties to the whole goddamn world and I might I might put up like little excerpts from the video because I do think I said some stuff that like it's poignant that like in the moment when I was saying it I don't think I could say it now with as much meaning and I don't know, like it was spontaneously meaningful and I think it would be a lot more difficult to kind of like, you know, regurgitate or like simulate those emotions, like all the, the shit that I was thinking about and the thoughts that were going through my head at the time to kind of weave this narrative but yeah my my titties is out like 100 percent just fucking out um i didn't even watch the whole thing like after like the third time it happened i was like bitch what the fuck <laughs> i'm so glad i took this down <laughs> what the fuck it's not even a thing that like bothers me like y'all know i don't give a shit about that kind of stuff like if it wasn't against Taz, i would fucking do it like because i don't i don't care i don't really see my body as particularly sexual like i get like people like feel that way but like if I'm just sitting here chilling, I don't there's nothing sexual about it to me. Like I'm just literally sitting here chilling in the state that like is most comfortable to me. And I feel like a lot of people kind of feel that way, right? I love being naked. Like I, I don't understand the people that like can't live in their own space without wearing clothes. That that seems weird, right? That's that's kind of fucking suspicious. But yeah, I um flash my titties on YouTube. Didn't get in trouble. Gang gang. And um, things have been going uh, better as far as my job goes. A lot less stress uh, as I've uh, gotten better at my job. Just generally. Just like because this is the first time I've ever done this particular task. And um, it's pretty grueling. It's pretty difficult. Um, we are on the street for I mean, at least eight, almost 10 hours at a time. Like it's, it's pretty grueling. It's pretty, it's pretty rough, but I, I did enjoy this last day, this Saturday. And I thought, you know, this is going to be horrible. But as time went on, it got a little bit better because I think I have a, that was on a team that was really good. 
Like we were, ju- we just had really good cohesion and and focus in getting the job done. Like everybody in the group is pretty funny. They have their own charm um, that they add to the group, and um, we're really good at getting things done. And it's always nice to be in a position where you're doing, where you're accomplishing things, even if you don't necessarily want to be doing that thing. The fact that you're good at it and you're getting accolades and you're doing well and things are going smoothly. It makes the job a lot more bearable, even if it's shitty. Like, even if we're outside and it's raining and it's fucking 50 degrees out. It was a lot better with the thought in mind that we aren't fucking up, that we're doing well, and that we're getting overtime. (laughs) Time and a half. I have, what, it was 12 and a half hours Saturday, today. I had 12 and a half fucking hours, so, you know. I put in my, um... My my time for this this week, just this week, I work sixty six hours, and so I had like twenty six hours of overtime. So that's gonna be nice. Can't wait for the amount to hit my motherfucking account, <laughs> like a prostate exam. I go back home Monday. I'm gonna chill Sunday. I don't know. I, I might go out to a trail. It's gonna be cold and raining again today or tomorrow or Sunday. It's gonna be cold and rainy again. But I might go out to a trail because I I just like being out in nature and I didn't get a chance to go anywhere while I was in Chicago. And so I feel like I need to do something, right? I need to, to, to draw the whole experience to a close on a good note, on a positive note. Even though it started fucking horrible, it started off hard. I feel like if I'm able to draw some positivity, some fulfillment, some meaning from the experience that I can remember this as being something that wasn't half bad. Like there was more good than bad, is what I'm trying to say. And I have a hard time, you know, trying to, I don't want to say manufacture because it's not manufacturing. It's You can't fucking manufacture positivity. I mean, I guess you can, like commercialized positivity like the bullshit positivity but i feel like in not manifesting creating fostering positivity in a way that is fulfilling and purposeful i feel like you can't manufacture it you just have to invite it and sometimes it comes and sometimes it doesn't but yeah this time i i feel like i was able to acclimate and adapt and make my moves accordingly and it really really tremendously helped that I was on a very productive and cooperative team and we weren't boring people we weren't there was no one bland on the team everyone had like their thing um me personally I was the one that fucking fell the first day I fell really fucking hard. You can see I have a band-aid on my finger. This is probably the least grievous of the (laughs) injuries. I uh, also skinned my elbow. Can you see that? You can barely see it. It's almost gone. I'm fucking ashy. Uh, Don't mind that. Um, Yeah, I skinned my elbow. That's not that bad. Um, And then... Where is it? Here. I skinned the shit out of this part of my hand. But my, my knee is the worst, by far. Let's see if I can show y'all. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. You can't see it. Uh, uh. Come on. Come the fuck on. There we go. There we fucking go. Yeah, I cut up my knee. That's the worst of it. Um, that shit fucking hurt. I can tell you that much, it really fucking hurt. Because um, I was holding something in my hands. And I'm walking down the fucking sidewalk. And it was one of those sidewalks because, like, we're in a disaster area. And so, <clears throat> water, the hydrostatic pressure from water can cause concrete to break. Like, you would think that, like, it's just some fucking water. And it's not like it was a hurricane. It was literally just a rain of a lot of water in one area. But the hydrostatic pressure, once it builds up, it can definitely do a lot of damage. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of uneven sidewalks and there was <laughs> an outcropping of the sidewalk that was like it was probably a good two 
two and a half, almost three inches above from the other part of the sidewalk. And I kicked my foot into it and I was holding stuff in my hands. And so I had no way of bracing myself. I tried to brace myself with my, my left hand because I'm low key ambidextrous. Like <clears throat> I use my left hand from like a lot of like my power moves. So like if I'm getting in a, in a fighting stance, I'm left-handed. If I'm driving, I drive with my left hand always. Um, opening jars, I open them with my left hand. It feels fucking weird to try to open anything with my right hand. Like, I just, I can't do it. Um, what other things do I do with left, my left? Like, all things that require me to exert any kind of force, I use my left hand, and that's why my left hand has worse carpal tunnel. My right hand, I do, like, fine motor stuff. Um, I probably could learn how to use my left hand to write. Um, I might I might do that just for the experience, like just for like the the, the mind exercise, because I, I definitely think it's something that, you know, you're, you're exercising your mind in order to, to make that shit happen. But I use my, my right hand for a lot of fine motor, like writing and well, even like when I'm like screwing my fucking like balls on my piercings, I use my left hand. Um, literally, like writing is pretty much the the most uh, the highest use that I get out of my right hand. I even fat with my left hand. Like literally, I use my left hand for fucking everything except writing. Yeah, things have been going all right. I'm gonna do something tomorrow and um, go back home on Monday and get back to the grind. I uh, I feel I feel all right. I feel a lot better, but I wanted to let y'all know that things are looking okay. I'm optimistic once again. And whether or not that's dumb, I'm going to keep doing it until I can't do it anymore. Deuces.